St. Agnes, Concordia, and then, and then, hey, right, good block, nice block. <laughs> and then, KSAT 12 photojournalist Mark Mendez with a nice save to protect Antonian head volleyball coach Samantha McClure in big board sports. Once again, the Brennan Bears are one of the area big dogs as we continue our big game coverage previews. Brennan is ranked 16th in the state in Class 6A per Dave Campbell's Texas football, and the Bears are predicted to win the District 29 6A championship. Last season, the Bears finished 12 and 2 overall with a perfect 8 and 0 record in district play. They advanced to the Class 6A Division One Regional Final, where they lost to Austin Westlake. The Bears have eight starters coming back from that squad, three on offense. Five on defense. Now the Bears have some big holes to fill, but they are confident they'll be able to compete and still make some noise. Yes, sir, for sure. We definitely lost a lot of seniors. We definitely lost a lot of numbers, some big hype guys. But uh, the motivation is still there and the determination, hard work, everything, everything inside we have on this team is still here. Uh, I think they're stepping up. I've definitely been trying to push them along the way and be like, look, this is how we're going to do it and this is the Brendan way. And we just get after it every day. Well, I, I feel really good about the team. You know, we talk about being aces, which is great attitude, great character, and great effort. And I just feel like this team is really embodying, you know, those three characteristics. And, and they take it pretty serious, and they want to do well, and they understand they got to step in. And, and this is probably the least we've had back. But at the same time, I feel really good about the guys, you know, and, and really good about the team. We've had some really good practices. We had a really great summer. So if we can just continue to build on that, you know, that's going to be a positive. But uh, we're looking to start strong, finish strong, stay strong. The Bears will start the season Friday, August 25th, 7.30 p.m. at the Steel Night. It's a big time showdown right out of the gate. The first today announced their 2023-24 regular season schedule. They'll open up October 25th at home with Dallas. The Spurs' first road game is October 29th at the Clippers. The first time they'll face the champion Nuggets is November 26th in Denver. The Spurs will open 2024 on the road at Memphis. Now the rodeo road trip is February 7th through the 27th, and the Spurs will end the regular season April 14th at Detroit. And the guys will play in Austin again this season, and those games are March 15th and 17th versus Denver and Brooklyn. And both those games will go down at the Moody Center. In girls high school volleyball, Antonian is off to a great start at 9-2 and two on the season, and they defeated some big-time programs such as the Clark Cougars and the Brandeis Broncos, and that's no easy task at all. Last year, Antonian finished with a 36-12 and 12 overall mark, advancing to the TAP 6A state semifinal. Facing big-time schools like Clark and Brandeis is exactly what this team needs as they prepare for a very tough district and hopefully another deep playoff run. I think it's like really good for us and important just the fact that we've seen all of these like UIL 6A teams and we're beating them and just the fact that this is great practice for us going into district and what we're going to see for the future at state. I feel like it also gives us a grasp of how to play in certain situations. They have some really big hitters and that's things that we're going to see coming up in the future. So I felt like it gives us some good preparation and you know playing together as a team is always an opportunity for us to create better chemistry with each other. So that's something that we really enjoyed. Antonian is in New Braunfels for a tournament that is loaded with some big time volleyball programs. I got a kick out of uh, sports photographer Mark Mendez. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Quick hands, Mark. With the save. Got cat like mm. reflexes, exactly. as the Antonian coach can attest to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Still to come here, a battle over a Shirts Police Department canine is sparking outrage at a city council meeting and online. The dog's previous handler wants him retired, but the police chief says not so fast. Hear from both sides next. A battle is brewing over a police canine in shirts. The dog's former handler left the department in May, hoping to take his partner of almost seven years along with him. But the shirts police department is putting its foot down on that idea, telling our Lee Waldman that dog has years of service left. Medora is eight years old and is at or not far from his canine retirement age. What are, message are we sending to them that we're going to use an animal until its life cycle is completely over to then just be discarded like a piece of equipment? Strong words from the people of Shirts to their city council about police canine Medora. Pop that door open. And Medora's ready. Madore has worked as a narcotics canine at Shirts PD since 2016 when he went through training with his longtime partner, Corporal Jason Hanley. I would say that every handler would say that, you know, 
the bond between them and their dog is significant. This May, Hanley left SPD, asked to retire now eight-year-old Medor, and let him live out his senior years at home with family. Canine's service life is anywhere from six years to 10 years. Sure's PD Chief Jim Lowry says Medor has more in him. We believe at a minimum of two and up to four more years, and that's been verified by the current vet. In May, Hanley wrote to Chief Lowry asking to adopt Medor, citing a previous conversation about the canine program in January. Quote, I brought up potentially how many more years of service Medor had, which would be two. However, that was intending me as his handler, unquote. The bottom line is I had to say no. Lowry says if Medor had a year or less of service, he'd give the dog to Hanley and begin the search for a new canine. The best decision is to put that dog back to work. That's minimal cost for us and for the community. Otherwise, I'm going to be spending $25,000 or more to get a new dog. An online petition to reunite Medor with Hanley has garnered over 2,800 signatures in a week. All I care about is just making sure my, my partner Medora can come back home. I'm disappointed in the fact that I do believe there's some misinformation out there. The chief tells me Medor has been kept in a kennel while they looked for a new handler, which they have now found. Both Medor and that handler will need to go through certification in order to officially begin working together. Chief says that's tentatively planned for October. In shirts, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And still ahead, a U.S. appeals court ruling that access to a popular abortion pill must be restricted. Details on the decision and when it will take effect coming up. The Biden administration says it will seek a Supreme Court review of a new appeals court ruling calling for stricter regulation of a widely used abortion pill. The lower court ruled that the FDA's relaxing of restrictions on mifepristone went too far. ABC's Justin Finch with the latest from Washington. At issue, access to the abortion pill, Mifepristone, now used in the majority of U.S. abortions after first earning Food and Drug Administration approval in 2000. The U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals out with a new ruling this week, handing conservative plaintiffs a partial win. Determining that the FDA's Mifepristone regulations are too relaxed and disregard some safety concerns. But stopping short of siding with plaintiff's calls for the pill to be pulled from store shelves. The FDA and medical community pushing back, insisting the drug is safe and has not raised any serious concerns after two decades on the market. A lawyer for the anti-abortion rights group challenging Mifepristone's access said they're looking forward to a final outcome that will hold the FDA accountable. If medication abortion were to be uh, reduced, then that would have a, a draconian effect on people's ability to get abortion care. Since 2016, the FDA has expanded access to Mifepristone, extending its use from 7 to 10 weeks of pregnancy, and in 2021, allowing it to be become widely accessible, including via mail. The Biden administration says it will seek Supreme Court intervention, potentially leading to another blockbuster abortion rights decision in the run up to the 2024 election. But with the high court already imposing a stay on lower court Mifepristone rulings, the Fifth Circuit's decision to roll back access to the drug is not taking immediate effect. Mifepristo maker Danko Laboratory says it's confident in the pill's safety and effectiveness and it's promising to fight the appeals court injunction. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In New York, the FBI and Saratoga County Sheriff's Office are investigating tampering of a railroad track. The FBI says an employee with a Saratoga Corinth and Hudson Railway passenger line noticed a problem during a routine safety inspection back in June. Authorities haven't released details on how the track was tampered with, except that it was done to, quote, deliberately derail a train. The FBI is offering a reward for information. The line offers scenic tours for passengers and includes field trips for young children. Workers using their company's 401k accounts to save for retirement, increasing their nest eggs. According to Fidelity, the average balance in 401k accounts is up 39% over 10 years. The average contributor has been saving, who's been saving since 2008 has a balance of half a million dollars. 
In the past year, Gen Xers have seen their balances grow 14.5%. Millennial savings grew 24.5% and Gen Zers saw their nest egg spike 66%. The average contribution for all account holders is 13.9%. Now, when employer matches are also factored in, that's the figure you come to. Mm -hmm. All right, outside today, we didn't quite get to that 107, but we got plenty close enough, Adam. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have noticed the difference. It's just would have gone down as the hottest day so far this year. Instead, we've tied for the hottest day so far this year. Several times we've been 106. Right now we're at 105, down a degree. By midnight, 86, tomorrow morning, 78. Our triple digit streak ends. We're gonna take a look at some stats so far from this month and the summer, along with that hope for rain and update in just a bit. The couple who owned the two dogs involved in a deadly attack in February have now been indicted by a grand jury. Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider were indicted on charges of attack by dangerous dog causing death and reckless bodily injury. The couple is currently out on bond awaiting their next court date. San Antonio police are looking for the man who they say stabbed a woman during an attempted sexual assault. Happened this morning on Columbus Street near Santa Rosa. Police say the woman was found near a church parking lot. She was taken to a nearby hospital with life-threatening injuries. A fire at a Southside apartment complex sent two adults and a child to the hospital. This happened on Commercial Avenue near South Park Mall. Fire officials say that fire started on the balcony of the apartment where the family hospitalized lives. No word yet on how exactly it started. The group Texas Yes helping kids at Mary Huppert's elementary school start the year off right. Today, the nonprofit delivered school supplies to the children. School officials say the donated school supplies a relief to parents' wallets. That's your 60-second recap. Those little kids are so cute. Mm -hmm. Adam Kasky got something else cute to show us, that it's, but it's an important effort behind this cuteness. Uh, you know what? I love these pictures that our viewers <laughs> send in. I do, too. I do, yeah. too. I mean, the splooting was fun to go through, splooting yeah. squirrels and whatnot, but, I mean, let's get to the... He's a good boy. He's a good boy. You got to stay cool in the pool. This is Cordillera Ranch, and that's Goose. Goose staying cool in the pool. And hey, look, there you go. If it's your watering day and you can put your sprinkler on, there you go. Nico enjoying a little sprinkler after his early walk with Dad. Attaway, Nico. Love it. Good stuff. And we all need a little bit of that these days, don't we? 105 tomorrow, Saturday, 104. By Monday, we're down to 102. And then look at Tuesday and Wednesday. 97, still one degree above average, but a break from our triple digit heat. By the way, the 105 tomorrow, that would tie the record for the day. All right, let's talk more heat and heat stats. You look across the state today, 100s for just about everybody. And many of these readings were record breaking. I highlighted the record high temperatures and most of these reporting sites listed here from Amarillo to Lubbock to Tyler, Dallas, Houston, Corpus Christi, all breaking records. Even Del Rio, 110, that was a record today. Catula also hit 110, Victoria 105, Kerrville 105. 19 consecutive 100 degree days now. And we're gonna keep tallying them up. So it looks like we're gonna be breaking the record of 21 consecutive 100 degree days. We expect to break that record, which was set back in 1962. And you look at August in general, every day has been 100 degrees or higher than 100 degrees. I think the coolest, the lowest high so far this month is 101. That's the lowest high temperature. We're 5.7 degrees above average. and. We've had a total of 52 100 degree days, which keeps us in fourth place right now, but we'll keep tallying them up and we'll keep you updated. So far, this summer is on track to be the hottest summer on record in San Antonio, only to break the record hottest last year. Anyway, taking a look at the satellite and radar, a little bit of activity popped up closer to Abilene and even between San Angelo and Midland here, but that's all staying out of our area, unfortunately, pretty insignificant as well. The upper level heat high that's sliding to the north. This is the shift in the weather pattern we've been talking about. So the steering flow is clockwise around this high. So 
because of that, with our location, with respect to that high being far to the north, it opens the door to steer a disturbance and some tropical moisture our way from the Gulf of Mexico. There's a 30% chance we could see an actual tropical depression form, but right now this is looking like an upper level disturbance with some tropical moisture and energy moving into the Gulf on Sunday and then some rain moving into Texas by Tuesday. Right now we've got it at a 40% chance Tuesday and then a 30% chance on Wednesday. So nothing spectacular just yet, but at least somebody in Texas is going to get rain. We still don't know exactly where the path of the rain is going to be. Keep in mind, we're trying to predict something that hasn't even formed yet. It's not even a disturbance yet. We can't even measure it. So it's a little more challenging to predict something that hasn't even formed. But we need the fire. We, I mean, we need the fire. We need the rain. This is the fire danger. The heat gets to you, right? This is the fire danger for tomorrow. High and very high in our area, even extreme in some locations just to the north. So 7 a.m., 78 degrees. By noon, we're at 98. 2 o'clock at 100. 105, that'll be at 5 and 6. Or at 5 o'clock, we'll hit 105. The humidity is going to be down in the afternoon, though, so it's not going to affect our heat index. About 105 for everybody in and around town, give or take a degree. And then 97 by Tuesday and Wednesday with that potential tropical moisture. We'll keep you updated because we'll be getting better information in the days ahead. Yeah, let's hope it heads towards us. Thanks, Adam. Oh, you're welcome, Myra, because it's third. Yeah. You know, I forgot. Wow. Oh, what I said I forgot earlier. You yes. Forgot I forgot again. Jeez. Yeah. Well, I want to give a special shout out. You all know her. Leah, Leah Mata Rodriguez, our intern this year. Her last day is this week. She earned her thermometer. She did. <laughs> and that is a more manageable size for, you know, say a college dorm room or a college apartment, right? And so really big shout out. Thank you to Leah. She's going to AM. She'll be a senior next year. And or as this coming year, I should say next week, she'll be starting her senior year and we will miss having her around. She did a very good job, very motivated and very dedicated and, you know, would find things to do. That's what I love to see in an intern. Yeah, she's very part. And she's really a part of the weather family. She was. Yeah, yeah. And very ambitious. And she put a lot out on our website as well. So you can read some of her interesting articles. Now we've got our winner of this week's homemade thermometer out of San Antonio, Samuel Browning. The Samuel Browning I just sent the e email to. Go to ksat.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing. How dare I forget? We would have missed all that. I know. I know. Gosh. Yeah. It's all right. But the heat gets to you. That's it what you said. It does, Adam, right? Adam will forgive you. You got to smack your forehead every once in a while. <laughs> the buzz coming up next. To the buzz and why are we showing you Bucky's? Well, if your favorite part about a road trip is snacks, this might be the job for you. Finance Buzz looking to pay someone $1,000 to sample 25 popular snacks at Bucky's. It includes the Roadside Stops Famous Beaver Nuggets, Homemade Oreo Fudge, Hippo Tacos, and Lemon Crisps. Um, interested. You'll yeah. have to document your experience through written reviews and photographs. Finance Buzz will also pay $250 to cover the cost of the snacks and merchandise. If you're interested, apply on the Finance Buzz website by September 11th. You must be 18 to qualify and be based in the U.S. Snoop has his sights set on grabbing a piece of the $13 billion ice cream business in the U.S. The rapper has launched a new line of frozen desserts. It's called Dr. Bombay. Hmm. The line has seven flavors, including bonus track brownie, iced out orange cream, rolling in the dough, and s'more vibes. <laughs> the ice cream available at Walmart stores for $5. We're all about the snacks today. Yeah. A Pennsylvania couple making their way across the U.S. playing golf. Their hope is to play in all 50 states. They don't have a long way to go after finishing their 49th state, North Dakota. They say the state's bully pulpit golf course is one of the best they've ever played. Colorado is the only state left on the couple's list, and they plan on checking that off next summer. I'm going to that looks like a pretty nice golf course in North Dakota. Yeah. It does not look like North Dakota. It does not look like oh, North really? Dakota. That, yeah, but it's, that's a nice course. That is all our time. Thanks for watching the news at 6. See you back here on the Night Beat at 10.